Hey folks, AshleyAllThingsIndustry.com and what I wanted to show you next is one of the things that I've learned uh, of many, I mean how many things have I learned in the last year and a half uh, to do with uh, endodontics. You can see the microscope set up here and obturating uh, a, a, a canal system with MTA. Now the idea, and I was talking with our endodontic mentor Dr. Crossfit, is that perhaps if you have, for a number of reasons, you want to obturate with MTA, whether it be the apical third or the entire canal system, uh, be it uh, you have a uh, blunderbuss or blown out canal system, uh, apice, you're, or you're intending on doing apical surgery, and to eliminate the retrofill, retroprep and retrofill stage, you can fill, obturate uh, orthograde which is a, I've, we've done that a number of times, I learned that from him, and what a great idea. And so you do your apical surgery, do your three millimeters cutback, uh, resection of the root, and you're done. Instead of having to uh, retroprep with uh, your points, with your ultrasonics, and then, retro, and then fill with MTA. Uh, another, and there are apexification, apexogenesis, and numerous other, and even perfs, so he taught me this and he showed me a variation, I've read a variation and I wanted to pass that on because it's very, uh, I've, uh, it's, it's actually a really neat technique. So follow me down the microscope to see what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to be using one of these clear endodontic blocks <clears throat> for purposes today of obturating the canal with MTA. And what I did, there's a little bit of red wax there. Um, I, from a previous shoot or take, like the I'm on take number 15. And what I've done is I've enlarged the canal to mimic something in the sense that, and actually it's more of a blunderbuss uh, apice, so you can see that there, to mimic what we would be, how, why we would be doing using MTA to obturate. So I've determined that the apical extent and file size I'm going to be using is a 90 file and in this case we could use I mean it'd be difficult to use a custom fit gutta perca point because of that but we may only fill with regular gutta perca to this point however we're using MTA if we decide to do a apical resection on this then we would that it we're trying to eliminate the retrograde fill so I've determined my length and apical size using a K file. Then I take a gutta perca point and place it to approximately one millimeter back from the place that I want the gutta perca. This is going to be used as a tamping device in a sense along with my file. And then I'm going to place some wax. Okay. There we go. Okay, so there is what you see from the coronal portion and from the side. So the first things first, after uh, preparing the canal in your typical fashion, I'm not going to talk about, it's important to remember that apart from doing the technical portion of doing dentistry, the biology is extremely important. You can do the best technical job possible, but if you're not paying attention to the biology, you may be off on the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is I've taken my map, i filled it with with MTA, my map system, and we're going to place that in the canal, and it looks like that from the coronal, it looks like that from the side view, and we're going to express some MTA into the canal. You can use a smaller carrier, I'm just using this for today's purposes. Now there's two ways you can do, a number of ways. Is probably a thousand. You can use the file, your master file, take that to the apical portion, sort of spin it down. That's what Dr. Crossfit has taught me. Alternatively, you can use a gutta perca point to take that down to the apical portion, take the MTA, carry it down. Now you can see that everything is going straight and in this case with that blunderbuss canal we're, I'm not able to condense this so we're going to use ultrasonics in a few minutes in an effort to condense all the way around 
all the way around, if you can imagine this down there, as best as possible to get the best condensation. The seal of the MTA. So like I was saying, the biology, this was really brought forth to me by uh, one of our speakers, Dr. Ken Hargraves. Okay, so again, there's the coronal view of what you would see intraorally. And let's just take this down with gutta perka and get my fingers out of the way. We're going to carry this apically with gutta perka, and this is what typically you would see. See it's slowly moving down. Apically, correction. And there I have it placed. And let's see how far we got it. Okay. Let's take my file. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of spinning it around just to make sure everything's covered. Okay. Take my gutta perka again. The one difficulty I have using the files is that I always carry a certain amount out with me. I'm going to wet my MTA just a little bit. It's getting a little dry. Let's see. I'm loading it here. You can see this is what I've been using. It's fairly dry. You can see it crumbly. I added a little bit of local anesthetic to it. Just get a little drier consistency. It's not really a thicker consistency. Okay, let's place this down the canal. And there we go. I'm going to carry it down this time with my good approach point. There it goes. Okay, and now I can feel, you can see my finger pushing. I'm starting to get some constriction. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my uh, pluggers, condensing devices, and my intent is to, let's show you here, place it as much around the canals, around the side of the canal, and place ultrasonic, an ultrasonic instrument to vibrate the material into place. Okay, I'm sure to do this this way. So I'm just rotating the block because it's, I've only got two hands. This is an attempt to be able to use my condenser and touch all the sides of the wall and condense the MTA. Okay, so you can see it there. Now I'm just going to continue. This is starting to get fairly dry. And that click, so let me just show you, I'm going to add some anesthetic just a little bit. There's nothing. Top of the syringe. Okay, so now we're going to place this in here. Okay, there's what you would see. Now let's take it from the side view. One of the things is that if it's too wet, it just stays, messes all over the place.
I'm going to take my condenser again. Now the thing is that you got to do this right the first time because you can't go back afterwards. Once it's set, this is cement. So I'm just trying to take it from the sides of, sides of the canal. All right, let's place some more. Okay, so in an attempt to speed things up, I uh, f place a few more increments of MTA. And what I wanted to do again was just to show the idea of using ultrasonic energy to condense some of the MTA. So we'll do, do it more uh, coronally. So here's my condenser. You can see where we are here. So the idea is to take my condenser should have that on video. There we go. And just condense around the inside of the canal. So you can see you're taking my condenser. Now stop. And try that again. Now I'll try the smaller one so maybe I can get some better, better view. So again the idea Better. Let's take that and just walk all the way around the inside of the canal. In an effort to condense it against the walls. If this does become too, if, if you find that it's too wet, say for this example, after you do that, let me just add some fluid here. What you can do is take, you've got a perker point, or correction, a paper point, <coughs> the long end, or the uh, fat end, and just use that to dry. I'll show that. You can do this all the way along the uh, canal system. So a few more points. One was that you can fill, so we fill to approximately this point here. Now you can fill all the way, you can leave a post space, you can do, I mean, the world is your oyster. So the idea is to get a dense MTA obturation using conventional uh, con condensing instrumentation as well as with ultrasonic energy. So let's just do this one more time before we go and take a radiograph and take a look at the apex. So at this point, I'd probably switch to using my condenser. And using the ultrasonic instrumentation, you can do that when you're eight as far down as you want, just to make sure you get a, f a dense fill. Okay, so again I've finished, I've now obturated to the most uh, coronal portion here. We're going to take a radiograph and let's just see the end. We'll take off the my wax plug. And you can see now we have what appears to be a dense apical plug. From here we can either, de depending on what the, the situation is, whether you're going to resect, leave this, or try to create a, an apical barrier. I hope this helps. Cheers.